reaction to spicy food. You bite into a fiery chili, and suddenly your throat seizes up, eyes water, nose runs, and you start coughing up a lung. The culprit is capsaicin, the molecule in hot peppers that tricks your nerves into thinking you're being burned alive. It binds to the pain sensor called TRPV1, the same ones that detect heat and pain, and your brain sounds the fire alarm. Evolution designed this reaction to keep mammals safe. To your body, capsaicin looks like a toxin, so it launches every defense. Cough to clear the airways, sneeze to eject the irritant, sweat to cool off. Totally sensible if you're a wild animal who just bit into the wrong plant thinking it's a tasty berry. But less so if you're a human who paid extra for ghost pepper fries. Modern society might have invented the most delicious fusion food like kimchi pizza, but your body's outdated alarm system still can't tell the difference between danger and dinner. Aversion to screeching. Someone drags their nails down a chalkboard and you shiver like you've seen a ghost. Instant goosebumps and jaw clenching. You're not dramatic. That's just your brain running on ancient software. Those shrill frequencies, around 2,000 to 4,000 hertz, are the exact range our ears are tuned to detect when danger calls. These calls include the cries of a baby, or when primates send out a screeching alarm. Back in the day, hearing that tone might have meant predator nearby, or someone in the clan is in trouble. So your brain learned to drop everything and pay attention. The amygdala, your emotional panic button, still lights up when it hears those sounds. Today, the worst threat might sound like the screech of scratching a chalkboard. There's no leopard or danger. It's just a sensory prank. But evolution never updated the code. Your ears still treat the sound like an emergency, while your rational brain stuck saying, relax, it's just school. Motion sickness. You're on a cruise, the waves are rolling, and suddenly your stomach joins the party, in the worst way possible. That cold sweat and nausea. Classic motion sickness. It feels random but evolution might be responsible for this mess. When your inner ear tells your brain, we're moving, but your eyes say you're sitting still because you're looking at your phone, the brain gets conflicting data and lashes out. To a primitive mind, that kind of sensory confusion meant one thing, poison. Our ancestors probably ate some toxic plant, got dizzy and disoriented, but managed to survive by throwing it up. So now, your modern brain thinks your vacation cruise ride is a hallucinogenic berry emergency. The problem? In the 21st century, there's usually no toxin to purge. Just a poor tourist hanging over the side of a boat while everyone else enjoys the view. It's evolution's worst false alarm. A better safe than sorry system that's about 10,000 years past its expiration date. Fainting. You see a needle or a drop of blood. Suddenly the world tilts, your vision tunnels and thud. You're out cold. That's your body pulling the most theatrical move in biology called vasovagal syncope, better known as fear-induced fainting. And believe it or not, evolution might have thought this was genius. One theory says it's the human version of playing dead. In the wild, some animals survive by collapsing and going limp. Possums, fainting goats, even certain deer fawns. Predators prefer struggling prey, so looking lifeless could make them lose interest. For early humans, lying still mid-panic might have been just enough to make the attacker move on. The reflex slows your heart, drops your blood pressure, and sends you flat, conveniently restoring blood flow to your brain while you're pretending to be roadkill. Fast forward to now. The only thing this reflex protects you from is finishing your doctor's appointment. Evolution's ancient play-dead system now just interrupts modern life with a surprise reboot. Itch Reflex you know that sudden, unstoppable urge to scratch an itch? The one that feels so good for half a second? Until it itches again? That's not random. It's a built-in reflex designed to save your ancestors from becoming an all-you-can-eat buffet for parasites. Back when humans were hairier and bugs were plentiful, a light tickle on the skin usually meant something small and bitey had landed. The instant response to scratch, flick, or swat helped remove the intruder before it could bite or spread disease. Itching might even be contagious by design. If one monkey started scratching, others joined in. Like a prehistoric group chat for We've Got Fleas. That synchronized scratching actually helped keep entire groups cleaner. Fast forward to today. We're mostly bug-free, but the reflex still exists. Just at the wrong things. Now, your tag itches, your dry skin itches, even hearing about itching probably made you itchy. You're welcome. The itch reflex went from vital parasite defense to everyday nuisance. Sweaty palms. 
Your heart's pounding as you stroll down the street with your date. She looks stunning and you want to make a move so you reach for her hand. But your hand is more wet paper towel than romantic gesture. Thanks, sweaty palms. That clammy feeling you just experienced is part of your ancient fight-or-flight reflex. And for your ancestors, it might have been the difference between survival and a nasty fall. When early humans faced danger, the body flooded with adrenaline. Sweat glands on the palms kicked in to boost grip. Slight moisture increases friction, helping you cling to tree branches, scramble up rocks, or keep hold of a weapon. In other words, fear literally gave you better traction. Fast forward to today, and that same reflex just ruins handshakes and first dates. You don't need stick your hands for a stroll through the park, but your body still acts like you're dangling from a cliff. It's evolution's oldest anxiety tell, a leftover panic grip that no amount of antiperspirant can fully silence. Blushing. You say something awkward in front of your boss, and your face turns tomato red. You can't hide it, can't stop it, and the harder you try, the redder you get. That's blushing. Your blood vessels widening under the skin and flooding your cheeks with color, powered by your body's favorite prankster, the sympathetic nervous system. Darwin called blushing the most peculiar and most human expression, and he was right. No other animal does it. Scientists think it started as a kind of honest alarm in early social groups. When our ancestors messed up, lied, broke a rule, or got caught doing something dumb, their involuntary blush basically screamed, I'm sorry, please don't kick me out of the tribe. People who blushed got forgiven faster, making it evolution's version of conflict resolution, in red. These days, it's mostly just inconvenient. You can blush from praise, attention, or even nothing at all. It's like your body leaking emotions you didn't approve of for public release. Useful in the Stone Age, mortifying in professional settings. Onion Tears You're chopping onions when suddenly your eyes launch a full sprinkler system. Turns out, when you slice an onion, it releases a gas called synpropanethyl S-oxide, basically nature's tear gas. It reacts with the moisture in your eyes to form a mild acid, irritating the nerves around your eyes called the lacrimal nerve. Your brain panics and orders the tear glands to flood the area, hoping to wash the toxin out. From the onion's point of view, this is brilliant self-defense. You eat me? I make you cry. This chemical in the onion evolved to keep hungry animals away. From the human point of view, total overreaction. Your body treats meal prep like a chemical spill. The tears are the same reflex that would save your eyes from smoke or pepper spray, just hilariously misplaced during soup night. We've adapted around it, of course. Chill the onion, wear goggles, turn on a fan. We've evolved crazy kitchen hacks, just not new eyeballs. Hypnic jerks. You're drifting off to sleep, all cozy and peaceful. Then suddenly, your whole body jolts like you've just been tased. Congratulations, you've just experienced a hypnic jerk, one of evolution's weirdest leftovers. Scientists think this reflex dates back to when our ancestors slept in trees. As they nodded off, their muscles relaxed, and relaxing too much could mean tumbling out of the canopy. So, nature installed an emergency wake-up jolt. Fast forward a few million years, and your nervous system is still running that same old system. Only now, instead of hanging off bark, you're flailing in bed startling your partner, and wondering if you just lost a dream wrestling match. Today, the reflex does zero good. It's your body's safety system misfiring in a safe environment. Some people get it more when stressed or overtired. Evolution's old tree sleeper instinct now just yeets us out of dreamland for no reason at all. Shivering. You know that full body tremble that hits when you're cold? Teeth chattering? Shoulders twitching? Legs bouncing like you're auditioning for a jitterbug? That's shivering, your body's built-in furnace. It's triggered by the hypothalamus, the brain's temperature control center, which basically commands your body to start shaking before you turn into a popsicle. Each tiny muscle contraction burns energy and releases heat. And when millions of them happen at once, your body temperature starts to climb. For early humans huddled in caves without coats, this reflex was life-saving, the biological equivalent of rubbing sticks together for warmth. Along with goosebumps and constricted blood vessels, it kept vital organs from icing over during the long, frigid nights. Today, though, we have jackets, heaters, and hot chocolate. Shivering is evolution's emergency furnace still running in the background. Handy if you fall into icy water, not so much for surviving the office AC. Startle reflex. Bang! Someone drops a plate, and you jolt like you've just been cast in a horror movie. That lightning-fast flinch eyes squeezing shut, shoulders tensing, heart jumping, 
is your startle reflex in action. It's an ancient body alarm that kicks in before you even realize what happened. The brainstem hears danger first, sends an instant duck and cover signal, and your muscles obey before your conscious brain can tell you to relax, because it's just the mischievous cat pushing your belongings off the table. For our ancestors, this split-second reaction was a pure survival technique. A sudden rustle could mean a predator leaping, and those who blinked, tensed, or bolted first, lived to tell the tale, and pass on their genes. Basically, evolution taught us to panic early and ask questions later. Now this reflex mostly turns on in restaurants, when balloons pop, or when you spill your latte on yourself. The reflex still does its job like protecting your eyes, but in a modern world lacking tigers, it's more comedic than life-saving. Pee shivers. You finish peeing, and suddenly, your body gives a full body shake, like you just felt a rush of cold air. You've just experienced the legendary pee shivers, or, if you want to sound fancy, post micturition convulsion syndrome. Scientists can describe it, but can't explain why it happens. That's still a bathroom mystery. One theory blames temperature. Urine carries a lot of heat, and if you're standing in cool air, that brief heat loss might trigger a mini shiver to make you feel warmer and make up the difference. Another theory blames crossed wires in your autonomic nervous system, the automatic control network that runs your heart, bladder, and digestion. When your bladder empties, your body switches from the hold-it-in mode, sympathetic system, to the release mode, parasympathetic system. Afterward, the system rebalances, and that rapid change in blood pressure and nerve signals can briefly jolt your muscles, like your body's circuits flickering as they reset. Whatever the cause, it's useless. It doesn't help you pee better, stay warm, or impress anyone. It's just your body glitching at the finish line of your bathroom break. Contagious crying. You're watching a sad movie scene, and suddenly your eyes sting. That's contagious crying, an ancient empathy reflex that still tugs on your tear ducts today. Even newborns do it. If one baby starts bawling, nearby babies often join in like a tiny, chaotic choir. Long before baby monitors, this reflex was actually quite helpful. If one infant cried because it was hungry, cold, or in danger, others joining in created an irresistible alarm for caregivers. A single cry might go unnoticed, but a chorus demanded attention. As humans evolved, that raw, automatic empathy matured into emotional connection, the foundation of friendship, parenting, and compassion itself. Now, it's more symbolic than useful. You don't need to tear up when someone else does, but it happens anyway. It might be a little embarrassing, but it just shows you care, and an evolutionary reminder that humans are built to feel together. Palmar Grasp Reflex Ever put your finger in a newborn's palm and felt them clamp down? That's the Palmar Grasp Reflex, one of the oldest tricks in our evolutionary playbook. It's automatic, powerful, and completely adorable. For our primate ancestors, this reflex was serious business. Baby monkeys needed to cling to their mother's fur while she leapt through trees or escaped danger. A grip that triggered instantly meant survival. Human babies inherited the same don't-let-go instinct, back when moms were hairier and tree branches were part of the daily commute. Today, though, the reflex is mostly for cute reactions from new parents. Modern moms aren't covered in fur, and babies don't travel through branches. The reflex fades after a few months, replaced by deliberate grasping. It's one of nature's funniest leftovers, proof that even before we could crawl, we were hanging on for dear life. If you liked this video and want to learn more fun facts about the human body, check out these other videos.